essentially to recap last time, all electricity is, is the flow of electrons in a field created by a potential difference uh, between groups of positive and groups of more negatively charged atoms. And going back to my original hose, garden hose analogy, if you have this garden hose fully charged, meaning you turn the faucet on, you turn the uh, spigot at the source of your local plumbing in your house, but you stopped the end from letting water through, you're going to have a lot of pressure in the line. It's going to be expanding the inside of the hose, looking for a place to go. But if the hose is a good one, hopefully it won't have leaks and uh, it won't be able to squirt out. So if it's a good hose, you'll have stationary water molecules. And they won't really be moving because they don't really have anywhere to go. But as soon as you open that up, and the water flows out then what happens molecules start to move and it's the best analogy to electricity in, in my understanding at least that I've found so that's how uh, that's the best way I could teach it and think of to continue the analogy we have a law here, it's a mathematical equation that basically says the voltage of a circuit, so you have like a 9 volt battery, um, what that means is that there's a potential difference of positive and negative charges blocked by, a, uh, by the structure of the battery, so it doesn't let all those charges immediately suck together, which is what they're inclined to do, because if you have too many positive charged, positively charged atoms, so most all atoms have a negative and a positive charge somewhat, but uh, a lot of them can have less, fewer electrons, meaning fewer negative charges, so they'll have a net positive charge on them, and that would create this group right here. Uh, if uh, you have an excess of electrons in your group of atoms, what you're going to have is an excess of negative charges. And when you have those two groups engineered to uh, to not come in contact with one another and essentially short out, that's what a short is, is a rapid flow of, of negative, um, negative, part, no, negative electrons to a, a source of positive charge. When you prevent that from happening by engineering somehow, yeah, it's called, really, it's just called a voltage source. Um, another name for that is a battery. So that's what this symbol right here means. It means you have a potential difference that electrons are very inclined to uh, to move under the force of. So all that is to say that with our hose analogy here, we have a um, let's see. So an electron here is attracted to a positive positively charged um, atom. So we'll say we have a flow of electrons. And the general flow is in that direction. So they're attracted to positive charges of an excess of that. So we have an excess of positive charges there and a excess of negative charges up there. So that's our voltage source, and if we if we don't have any means for the electrons to travel, they generally won't 
travel through the air or a uh, insulator such as plastic or rubber they love to tra uh, travel through um, conductors I almost forgot that word conductors which are you think of a conductor as a metal essentially metal is a or water is a very very good conductor and they essentially that just means they let they let electrons flow from atom to atom within that material very easily so with our hose analogy if we complete the circuit that's kind of like opening up the faucet and letting the current flow but as soon as you break the circuit and you have a you know you either have air or some other insulator that won't that kind of inhibits the flow of electrons the current immediately stops it's, it you think of it, it gets clogged up so with that we can think of we can uh, get rid of this room this drawing here and actually try to tackle some problems in um, I don't know what you call it. I guess electrical engineering uh, basic no I guess this isn't really engineering it's it's more physics I guess really so we have a circuit here and let's bring our metal back into contact with one another so what you have is a voltage so you think of like a battery right there and we have a wire connecting the positive side going around to the uh, negative side and what this represents right here is an impedance to electrical flow or a current um, voltage is the potential it's kind of like the, the field that is created by um, making a separation negative and positive charges and current is the flow of electrons through that field and current is really just a measure of the number of charges um, amps per second so if you took a hose and cut out a cross section of it um, like that or if you took a metal wire and you had current flowing along it we'll call that I maybe 4 amps which is a lot um, all that means is that there's 4 um, oh sorry spelling that wrong but uh, the unit of charge you never hear it in everyday parlance when talking about electricity because current is used but what current is is a unit of charge passing a given area um, is the amount of units of charge or coulombs passing a given area in a certain time so if there's four coulombs passing every second this little area right here then that means we would have four coulombs per second which is four amps right there so hopefully that, that makes sense so think of amps as a uh, almost like the equivalent of velocity it's like you're going six miles per hour that's you go 
six miles every hour. Mm, I guess that's not the best analogy, is it? But uh, it's the unit that uh, is most frequently used in talking about electricity and how it flows. So, okay, now to an actual pro problem. Um, if we have a five volt battery going through a resistance of 400, let's make it round numbers, 1000 ohms, and it's the uh, Greek, Greek symbol for omega, then what would the current be that's going through this circuit right now? And it's simply an algebraic expression. And it's just a matter of plugging it in, really, and solving for the unknown. And the unknown here is I. So, so we have 5. Um, we have some, you know, x i times 1,000 ohms and uh, if we sum well, if we just made it without using the numbers at first and so we can just go ahead and solve for i and get in this equation v equals i times r uh, if we want to solve for i we just divide both sides by r get rid of it there and you have I equals voltage divided by R, or the resistance. So the current here for voltage is 5 volts divided by 1,000 ohms. And then you're going to have a uh, 0, 0, I guess. 0 0.005 amps, which uh, which is five milliamps. I guess just made it in the screen there. That's good. That's always uh, yeah, and that's that's really essentially how circuits function, right there. So you have a voltage source and when you have your electronics, what's happening is, well, that's AC, it's it's alternating current. This would be a direct current. An alternating current, it, ah, I guess I couldn't really get in, I couldn't explain that in a sentence or two. Knowing me, it would take another 45 minutes. So maybe I'll make that another episode if you guys are interested at all. Um, what are we at? 15 minutes here. Let's see. What else can I do to explain this? Well, yeah, I guess one way. Well, something that's pretty useful for me is the concept of how voltage and current relate to one another in setups where you have multiple batteries if you have multiple batteries um, you can set them up in two ways go ahead and erase all this here and uh, please pardon me for not erasing completely yeah, sorry. All right. Okay. Um, now we could have we could have a battery and another battery and.
and, and you could draw them like Yeah, you could draw it like that, uh, but it's a lot easier to understand it when you draw it out like that to me. So. Alright, so we have... If you have a 10 volt battery... Hmm. See, so in a five volt battery, and you know, uh, ten ohms over here. Well, I guess that's a that's a bad example. I shouldn't have done it when you have two batteries, but. Um, there's a basic principle in electric circuits and the physics of electric circuits is that you can have things in parallel or in series and here when you have two batteries that have a potential difference that are different from one another and they're hooked up like this they're gonna rapidly uh, react probably pretty adversely in order because they want to have the same difference so it's like you have you know a bunch of positive charges here a bunch of positive and negative charges but you have twice as many positive charges over here so um, based on the uneven distribution of charges you're gonna have a, a pretty violent reaction I, I would imagine there so um, yeah for this one let's all right so replacing this with uh, 20 ohms the principle is is uh, well you know what I want to sit here and do math with you guys. I want to try the little bit I do know. I want to just try to show you what it is that I do know. So if you have a, I don't know, um, a motor here and a, a light bulb. If, uh, I, don't, I don't think these are the right symbols here, but um, essentially any objects that are hooked up to the battery so that they share the common, I won't say ground, so that they share a common bit of metal wire with this side of the battery and likewise share a bit of metal wire with this side of the battery these two objects are each going to feel a force of 10 volts and that's actually the um, the technical way of explaining it because a force is actually what voltage voltage represents is it's a force that is, that is imposed on uh, electrons and let's see so 
Now the current is a different story, so if we can reach that, give us a little, give us a little room up here. Um, so you have a current going through here, and let's just say that when you, when you have a device that's using electricity, if you think about it like that, you could think about it as slowing the current down and essentially that's all a um, a res well let's call it a resistor actually yeah, I, didn't, I don't think I explained that yet but essentially that's all a resistor is is a something that bottlenecks the current. So if I just draw instead of a light bulb and a motor, I just draw some resistor symbols here. Um, just think about it like that. So you have you have all this current and it hits the resistor um, it's the best way to explain it I guess the best way to explain it is the relationship between these guys so when you have if you have a higher voltage the product of these two are going to be higher uh, but if you think about it like I guess that really didn't help much if my voltage is 10 volts and I have 5 amps of current that means that my resistance, if 10 volts equals 5 times something, that something would have to be 2 ohms. So not very much resistance at all, relatively. Um, but at this, I could also have 10 amps of current. And then my resistance would be going down. So... The resistance, uh, yeah, I guess that's a that's a good way of it, uh, showing you how the math works for that. So if my current is going through here, the smaller the resistance is, and that just actually I'm not really sure what a resistor is made up of the uh, the actual structure of it. I'm not really too sure, but um, the the smaller the resistor, the larger or more amount of charge per second, larger the current is that can flow through it. And uh, the relationship is the same. So if I decrease that to 5, then if this needs to remain 10 amps, then this has to change mathematically. So to get 5, you have to divide 10 by 2 or um, that's the same as saying multiply it by one half so so that would be one half of an ohm right there and what else can I explain about that let's see what else is there um, Yeah, I guess that's all to say the relationship is something that's really important, so. Um, when you have a fork in the road here, yeah, I guess I was going to the fact that any product you plug in the wall naturally has a resistance to it and that resistance 
is what generates um, that's not what generates it's really hard to explain and probably because I really don't know it that well I guess um, anything you plug in a wall though the 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 pressure on the other side of that wall at the source of the outlet sees what you plugged in as a certain amount of resistance it really is all that that comes down to and uh, whenever you have a current going across uh, forking at a road you know at a fork here at a intersection or a node as it's called in electronics the current always gets divided in a way that the two new subcomponents always add up to the original amount. So the original current equals the I sub 2 plus I sub 3 there. And um, how else can I relate that? If you have a voltage being connected to a series of resistors, and it roughly looks like this, so maybe it's a uh, maybe it's three diodes, little LED diodes that look kind of like that. the property of a circuit that looks like this is that the current going through these no matter what the resistance is this could be 100 ohms this could be 200 and this could be 4 ohms um, I'll leave that there the current is going to be the same through all of them so I um, here yeah. Essentially you just add these up, so 200, 100, 300, and 4. So we have 10 volts equals I um, times 304. That was a bad example, so maybe I'll do, um, maybe I'll do, what's something easy, make it 1,000. I'll make it 500. I'll make it 500, I guess. So 500 ohms. And that would be 200 right there. So 200. 200 and 100. It would essentially be a current of 10 over 500. Or. You guys see that? is 0 0.05 or 50 milliamps so that that would be the current going through all those diodes making them really bright and I guess they're red LED lights so it's yeah so that's essentially it in a nutshell. These types of circuits are 
If you ever take a introductory circuits class in probably in college, especially if you're going to be an engineer, you'll have to at least take uh, one of these, I believe. This is going to be the pretty much the first thing that you're going to learn. So hopefully it helped you out, and uh, if it didn't, hopefully it relaxed you. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much how basic direct battery powered. Uh, circuits work and then when you have alternating current that's essentially just that's um, the current goes let's see it goes back and forth and it goes boom it makes the boom sound every time it does it too. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's hard to explain, but essentially it's just a rotating the 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 characteristic of a back and forth, a um, alternating nature of the alternating current system that everybody is on in the world when you plug into a wall from power plants that's that's the current and it's really hard to think about that but uh, essentially it's it, 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 if you think of it in terms of electrons moving you know 20 miles 60 times a second back and forth it, it's confusing and it's incorrect um, what you should think of it as is is um And those pendulum balls, if you guys can see there, and the when you have that motion of this ball, you knock into these, and these three always appear to stay stationary, yet this one somehow moves that's the same principle there it's uh, that to me is the best analogy for how electricity functions on an atomic level um, because when you knock a if you have a copper wire and it's it's pretty rigid you know it's not a fluid it's a solid when you knock an electron and when it's current you can imagine it's millions um is it millions yeah yeah if you're talking about individual electrons it's actually billion it's 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 a lot what is it um oh yeah it's a stupid number of electrons it's like 10 to the 19th power so trillions and trillions and trillions of elect individual electrons are actually being knocked out of the their original atoms shells and bumping into the next area of uh, electron clouds and this uh, energy it's like a pulse cascades just like this through the think of that as the wire and this is the power plant here power plant and this is your house and uh, it goes through the entire grid and ends up in your house where you can use it to, you know, run all your TV and dishwasher and appliances. And um, yeah, it's essentially just a pulse of neighboring electrons. Kind of, they're all butted up next to one another. And it, it's like a wave propagates through the line I guess that's the best way to look at it so um, yeah that's a that's probably not a really good explanation of alternating current but that's the best way I know to understand it well, anyways uh, this video is a lot longer than I originally thought it would be but my ability to ramble 
I hope you guys enjoyed some of it, at least, if you're with me this long, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Alright, until next time, uh, if you guys enjoyed it, let me know, and maybe I'll make another video uh, about electricity, or maybe just another topic in physics. So, until then, sleep well. <laughs>